our daughters, my husband's Bruce Sudano, um, our daughters are, are, are just gorgeous. They're really yes. beautiful. And I'm not saying that as a joke. I mean, I'm not saying that as a mother. I'm saying that as a professional. Well, I've seen Brooklyn's work, and I can attest to it. Yeah, she's, she's a very, they're yeah. very, very pretty girls. And, um, you know, I think that's the hardest. And I have another daughter, Mimi, who's the original daughter that I had in Germany. But, <laughs> you know, I don't want to leave her out, because if she reads an article and hears that her name wasn't mentioned, then she'll probably get very <laughs> mad at me. And I have two beautiful granddaughters and a grandson. So, um, you know, my and, and great, I have wonderful girls. Son-in-laws. Okay, I've said it all. Okay. Right. Everybody gets <laughs> a proper everybody point. everybody in, okay? Yes, I, I will And make... I have a great housekeeper, two great housekeepers, <laughs> lovely, wonderful people, and a great guy who works outside. So when um, you're uh, when so when so you're talking to uh, to your kids who, you know, are in the entertainment industry, yep. uh, you say just kind of, are there people that you tell them to look out for? I mean, are there, because I think what we've seen happen here, and it, it, this is certainly not a news story, but, it, you know, now with the uh, the death of Michael Jackson, we mm-hmm. get a real is you know just another one of those examples of you got to be very careful about who the, who you have around you all the time and that's why we have very very few people around us and the people that we have around us most of them um of the people that are in our inner circle have been with us for 15 years or more yeah so um there's very few new people around us and basically, it is, be- and, and around my children or around my family, and primarily, as, and even I lost the, my secretary, but it's so hard to replace my secretary because it's, she has to be so a part of my life that, and it's nothing that I have to hide. It's just that I want my life to be personal when I'm personal. And, um, you know, when after that whole thing happened with Michael and the housekeepers and everybody had something to say, I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It really made me think, well, what if I leave my dirty socks on the floor or, you know, right. you know, you don't want everybody like knowing every detail of your life. Um, isn't that exactly, difficult. isn't that exactly the peril though? I mean, that's the, to me, it, it's interesting. And, and Michael, not just the people who are around him as housekeepers and the people who immediately started talking or whoever took that picture of him lying dead, uh, in the ambulance and then sold that to the tabloids. But, yeah. But the um, but even I mean in Michael's case it's unique because he had family around him who also you know they all kind of came up through the you know the in the same entertainment existence right, right. and trying to kind of take advantage and then there was a story today I, I pray this is not true but there's a story that uh, Joe Jackson wants to take Michael's three kids out on the road as the Jackson Three I mean it, it's such a weird it, it, did you know Michael at all. Yes, I did. Yeah, and uh, I mean, what was your sense of him? Was your sense that 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 he didn't want all of this stuff around no, him? I I don't. I think he well, actually. The interesting thing was, I think he was just getting ready for the first time in London to expose the kids. I didn't speak to him before that, but um, to expose his kids to well, he wanted his kids to see him in his glory mm-hmm. because they'd never physically seen him at his height and um, the height of his you know right. his his. So he was kind of doing this for them to show them? And I them? think he was doing it more because I don't think he was, I don't really think he wanted to be performing that much anymore. I think he was, you know, just wanting to live a little bit. And I think he was enjoying living with the kids, having a life, having a real life, mm-hmm. and enjoying the things he's already achieved, and, you know, doing humanitarian things. That's what I think he was happy with doing, to tell you the truth. And singing, obviously, is and, and performing is, is for us what we want from him. But um, I think some of the other things in his life were equally as as important as he got older. Um, all right. So what what was your reaction? I just want to talk a little bit about Michael, the artist here. Uh, what was your reaction when all of that uh, this was going on? Did you think that he was uh, about to make an artistic comeback, too? Did you have a sense of that? In terms of his, oh, yeah. I think that this would have been the biggest show he has ever done. Hmm. I think he was really ready. If he was going to do it, it was going to be incredible because he has to be incredible if he comes back. Your life experience is fascinating because you were as big a star uh, and in in that era as those the uh, young ladies are today. But I didn't. I didn't see. I what I. I always avoided the press. You know, if I got it, it was because they were. They were absolutely chasing me. I was never going after it. And the press has changed. I mean, there's you know digital. Yes, they've gotten hungry, and there's more of them. And they've gotten much more vicious. Um, I think for me, I realized that I that coming from Germany and coming from a totally different mindset than the American mindset, I think, made a big difference for me. Because I didn't look at it as a good thing. I looked at it as something to avoid. 
And um, other than when you when you're doing a project and people are publicizing your project, that's what the press is for, you know. But our press has gotten make stars out of people that do nothing. Yeah, that's true. And I'm not putting the people down because good if you can get it and you can make yourself into something, fine. But that's not the objective. All right, the objective general. I mean, at, at least uh, my sense you know, of it was it was the art was the objective. Uh, the art. Somebody who can do something. What do you do? I mean, you don't just get pressed to, for the sake of getting press. You get pressed because you do something well. Yeah. And, I mean, that's where it used to be. And if you don't do it well, then they drop you. So that <laughs> should keep you on your game. And you that know? happens actually even more viciously. That, cycle, that life cycle now is much faster than it was. Oh, I mean, you know, and you can't blame somebody like, uh, I'm not going to name a name, but, you know, like certain people in the press that have gotten press, and from that press they've spawned businesses yeah. and then gone into something else. Hey, I think that's brilliant. I really do. But I don't think that that's, the, you know, I mean, I think that all of this focusing on human beings and their frailties when there are really serious issues going on in the world is probably not in our country's best interest. Yeah. Um, it's it, We're going back to a style of journalism from 100 years ago where that was the way it was done. And, and that's the way that's that's how uh, it, it's celebrity journalism and celebrity um, uh as opposed, it, it's it's an entertainment as opposed to any kind of journalistic enterprise. Yeah, I, I, yeah, exactly. So, so. In, in any case, I just think that I think that we need to find a way to bring focus back to things that are really, really vitally important to our lives, things that bring um, that better us and don't make us worse. Because I think what happens is by looking at all of these people do all of these off the wall stupid things, it just makes other people think that that's how they have to do what they have to do to get over. Yeah, and it doesn't breed goodness. It breeds stupidity and, you know, and narcissism. Well, here's an opportunity to see Donna Summer right there in front of you, August 23rd. Tickets are on sale right now for the venue at the Horseshoe Casino in Hammond, Indiana. Donna, thank you so much thank for being with too. us. Appreciate <laughs> okay, it. Bye. All right, bye bye.